What inspired you to set your film during the onset of the Asian crisis? Um, you know, the film was set in 1997 during the Asian financial crisis. I think it's a very, very natural decision to set it in the 90s because, you know, I was born in the 80s, I spent most of my childhood in the 90s. It's a film that's very much inspired by my own childhood memory, so that's a very natural decision. The 997 Asian financial crisis um, was very, very memorable for me. Um, you know, it was a really bad time for Asia, um, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, the stock markets, you know, uh, collapsed. People lost a lot of money. Um, a lot of businesses closed down. People lost their jobs. I remember that very well because my, my dad lost his job. You know, he had a very good job as a sales manager in an American company and um, yeah, that was, that, that was gone really quickly. Um, he didn't find a good job again, so I remember that very, very well. The family in your film, they're quite a wealthy family and, and they are at the beginning of the film certainly portrayed as emotionally cold, maybe slightly devoid of love and so forth. Is there any kind of message in the film which relates to how a family is in their relationships and the class that they belong to? I think, I think they, they're not awfully wealthy. I think they are, they have enough, you know, they are middle class, they've got a car, they've got, you know, a nice apartment. Um, but I think, I think life has taken a toll on them, you know. I think the family has spent so much time focusing on their careers, their jobs, on making ends meet, on struggling with, you know, the daily necessities of life. Um, that, that, that I think sometimes you forget, you know, uh, in that pursuit for money, in that pursuit, you know, for success. We actually forget, I think, what's, what's key, what's important. Um, I think what's interesting about the film is that you know, when they had everything, uh, they don't seem very happy. But, but towards the end, when they have lost um, you know, a lot of what they have, I think they begin to see different things about themselves, about their relationships, and I think they, they begin to find out you know, what is more important. You know, there's an old uh, expression in the film world, never work with children or animals, right? <laughs> but you have managed to coax, you know, from a very young, very young actor, a very convincing and a very confident performance. Um, and I'm wondering how you approach that, because I mean, you're relatively young yourself. Um, how, did you, how did you manage to get that performance from him? It's, it's interesting because, um I do know that, you know, don't work with kids, don't work with animals. In this film, I had both kids and I had both animals. Um, somehow, I, I love working with kids, you know, in my films. I've done that in my short films. I've done that in my feature film. People saying, you know, you must be, you must be crazy, you know, it's, it's too risky. Uh, there's too, too, too much stakes involved when, when you do that. Um, so I actually spent a long time finding for the right kid because he is the lead of the film. Um, you know, eventually we, me and my casting team, we spent about 10 months. We went to about 20, 21 schools. We saw 8,000 children. So it was like a massive military operation, you know, even though it was, it was just a few of us. Of the 8,000 kids we saw, we auditioned formally about 2,000 of them. Of the 2,000 kids, I selected about 150. And I spent about six months over weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, doing workshops with these kids, 150 kids, um, before I decided upon, you know, this child, you know, who was in the film. So, so he was literally fresh, you know, hasn't been, you know, in film, um, hasn't been on television, hasn't been in theatre, hasn't even been in a school play, yeah. Okay, and f finally, uh, Singaporean film has enjoyed <coughs> a kind of upsurge, certainly on the festival circuit, <coughs> and other films like uh, Our Boys to Men and so forth, um, especially in recent years. 
Um, why do you think this is? What do you see as the reason behind that? Uh, yeah, I have to correct one thing about that because okay. Our Boys to Men, it's a very local film. It made right. a lot of money in Singapore, but it never traveled beyond Singapore because it's not a festival film, it's a slapstick comedy. Um, but, but I think what's interesting is um, I think I think with this film, what has happened? Uh, this is the first Singapore film, feature film, to actually win an award in Cannes, uh, and no less, you know, a big award as well, the Camera Door. Um, so that has actually shown a, a spotlight on the country, and people are uh, very keen to find out what else is happening in the country. Um, you know, I think I think the past. Uh, few years and also the next few years it will be a very very interesting period for Singapore cinema because you know you have filmmakers that were educated outside of Singapore or in Singapore in proper film school so they have formal a uh, formal film education uh, they are very very passionate about cinema they understand the language of cinema watch a lot of films uh, intelligent perceptive you know um, have made short films that have very much their own personality their own voice so I think that's all. Um, I think that's that's all going to develop into uh, a new wave of Singapore films, um, and that that will be very very interesting. I think. Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you.